not there where I was. of the ground and uh, but we will have them out again next year weather permitting so we did though with the help of the boy scouts and girl scouts put up six thousand almost six thousand flags on every veteran grave in the cemetery throughout the weekend. So, that the weather was very nice also um, we've been hitting little gaps here and there where the rain uh, hasn't been here and getting the work done we will have a flyover salute and if I see your fingers pointing it will happen right now if you want to stand up and take that in this is the Jayhawk wing of the commemorative Air Force we're flying a World War II trainer plane Thank you. 
Jeff Longwell was born and raised in Wichita with five siblings. He was raised by a single mother on the west side. This gave him an appreciation for hard work, responsibility, and set him up for a lifetime of serving others. His lifetime in Wichita and his service in nonprofit and government roles has given him great insight to both the history of the thriving Midwestern city and the long-term needs of the community, including infrastructure investments which will allow for their growth into the, into the future. Attended West High School, class of 1977. Attended Wichita State University. He served 12 years on the May School Board, ending in 2007, serving as the president for two of those terms. Eight years on the Wichita City Council, and was elected mayor of Wichita in April of 2015. Please welcome Mayor Jeff Longworth. see so many people that are out here paying tribute to those our true nation's heroes and that's why it's also an honor and a privilege to serve as your mayor because we're a city that appreciates those who have sacrificed everything. I want to extend a special thanks to all the individuals in the armed forces and families of, of those that are here with us today. Thank you for your service in our community and in our country. Each year on the final Monday in May, we as Wichitans, as Kansans, as Americans, come together to demonstrate that while we are made up of many people, we are one nation. No matter where you come from, what you look like, or what you believe in, we are all Americans. Often we focus on differing views. Many people have different ideas on how to make our cities, our states, or our country great. Strip away all the contentious issues that we fight over and we are left with the love of family and country. And that since 1775 we have fought and died for. We are left with the freedom and the right to pursue a greater tomorrow. It's what the foundation of our country stands on. Our military heroes fight for that freedom every day. They uphold a long tradition of service to their country their loved ones in the name of freedom. The freedom in the pursuit of greatness comes only with sacrifice. Military service places that ultimate demand on our soldiers and their families. It isn't enough that they pledge their time and talents in service for their country. They may also demand the ultimate sacrifice and loss of their lives in the pursuit of their duties. This is why we're here today. To remember
you would please stand now and face the west in the Wichita Memorial Post 3115, Trust the Women's Auxiliary, Founder of the Fifth Soldier, will now have our Veterans Memorial Service. Thank you. 
Standing rendition of Star Spangled Banner, Congressman Estes, Mayor Longwell, thank you for your unwavering support of our servicemen and women, and especially their families. That means it means the world to us here at Thank you. Finally, to many others today offering their time and talents, I want to say thank you for, for stepping up, holding the flags, saying such kind words from the VFW, and being part of this special day. I am humbled to be part of such a supportive community which holds such a rich heritage of recognizing and supporting our nation's military. The cornerstone of your heritage is McConnell Air Force Base, and its namesake is purely Wichita. Thomas, Brad, and Edwin McConnell, three brothers from Wichita, enlisted in the Army Air Corps in 1943 and conducted their training up at Fort Riley, Kansas. All three eventually flew B-24 Liberators in the Pacific Theater out of Guadalcanal. Thomas, unfortunately, died in the airplane crash later in 1943. Fred was lost a few years later in 1945, and Edward passed away in 1997.
Over the course of 50 years, this one Kansas family sacrificed and contributed an incredible, incredible amount to this nation. And every airman at McConnell, whether active duty, guard, reserve, or civilian, is reminded daily of the Patriot sacrifice as they transit the front gate and their name is spoken by our security force members, our defenders, when they say, hello, welcome to McConnell Air Force Base. Their name, their memory will carry on. Standing here this morning with you, I could share a thousand words, but those words are not the focus of today. Today, what truly matters is this, this gathering of family, friends, neighbors, and strangers. All who collectively speak of those who in their nation called, sacrificed an immeasurable number of tomorrows by stepping forward and saying, here I am, send me. No, no words shared can ever capture the true meaning of this day unless those names are the names, unless those words are the names of the fallen. It is said that a person dies twice, once after they take their last breath, and then again when their name is spoken for the last time. And that's the importance of today, this Memorial Day, so that those who gave us so much are never truly gone. It is our duty as a living, the benefactors of their sacrifice, to gather and recount their stories and echo their names again and again. We must take time to walk among the fields of stone and read aloud the etchings of those who have fallen. Those who may no longer have someone on this earth who can carry on their memory. And just like the McConnell brothers, never let them be forgotten. Personally, I didn't know how important this was until three years ago when I passed through Wichita on my way to Liberal, Kansas with my father. He had heard there was a memorial maintained by the town that possibly held the name of his closest cousin, Lance Corporal Russell Desmond Welchel, 1st Marine Division, 1st Recon Battalion, 1st Force. Rusty, as he was affectionately called, had volunteered to be a, a Marine in hopes of being a drummer for the Corps. But of course, the Marines asked him to be a rifleman first. A few months after entering Vietnam, on 7 September 1967, he lost his life in a firefight. My father, himself a Vietnam veteran, upon arriving at the memorial, found names contained on that granite stone of those who had served in Seward County. Rusty's name was one of them. My father, with tears in his eyes, found great comfort knowing Rusty, who was an only child from a small family, which had moved away, was memorialized on a granite stone. I'm sincerely grateful to the citizens of Seward County for maintaining such a memorial and hope others for years to come take time to visit, reflect, and allow those names to pass across their lips. I'm also grateful for this community, my family's new home, Grant and Oliver, my wife Katie just moved here 10 months ago. I'm going to let you know that in my 27 years of serving this nation, I have never seen a community with such great support. But to stand here with you today in reverence, honoring those servicemen and women who are not only laid to rest within these 120 acres, but also within a countless number of other cemeteries across our nation. We must always think of those who have yet to find their way home as well, yet to find their final resting place among their brothers and sisters. Until they do, let us never forget. As today grows long and the sun sets, let us make a promise to each other, to our departed centuries of freedom, that we will not forget their names, and instead of waiting for yet another trip around the sun, stay invigorated to carry their memory and to speak of them often. To do so is the only way we as Americans can truly show our appreciation for the blanket of freedom their sacrifice has provided us in our posterity. And as we show appreciation for those who have given the last full measure of devotion, let us also take comfort knowing we have guardians standing by today, at this moment, willing to do the same. Soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guardmen, and Airmen, all stand ready at home and abroad 
to defend those free freedoms secured by those who have gone before. McConnell alone has over 400 airmen deployed in approximately 16 different locations around this world. I promise you that they and their duties will not falter and they will not fail. So on behalf of Colonel Olson, the 22nd Air Patrol and Wing Commander, and all the men and women at McConnell Air Force Base, thank you for allowing us to be part of your Memorial Day. God bless the memories of those who have served, those who are currently serving, and those who will serve. God bless Wichita, and God bless the USA. Thank you. There's a longing to be free, free from fear and persecution, free to think and free to speak. To many hearts have now been silenced, to the song of liberty. Let the heart of every person be a place where free.
next on. Ron Estes is a fifth generation Kansan and serves Kansas' fourth congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives. The son of a veteran, Representative Estes has also prioritized supporting our military and military families. While helping veterans and constituents navigate government agencies like the VA, Social Security, the IRS, and others. Prior to becoming an electric, elected official, Representative Estes grew up on his family farm in Kansas and went on to earn a degree in civil engineering and a graduate degree in business administration. Ron and his wife Susan have three children and reside in Wichita, Kansas. Congressman Ron Estes. y'all for coming out today. You know, it, it's such an important testament that we as Americans continue to honor and recognize those that have come before us that have created the nation that we, we get to enjoy. You know, it, it's really a, a testament that um, you're willing to spend some of your day on what's typically considered the unofficial start of summer uh, and, 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 and reflect and, and honor what has made our country great. And, and what a beautiful voice that Don Baker has. You know, is he just, yeah. You know, as you just talk, you know, this song's left freedom ring, and talk about how we as a nation need to recognize that the cost of freedom isn't free. And we have to continue to work, continue to strive, and continue to work to make sure that that freedom that we have to work is something that we can pass on to the next generation. You know, on this Memorial Day, we need to remember the price that Americans have paid to, to maintain that freedom. You know, for decades, our nation has honored those service members who supported our country, supported our livelihood. You know, Memorial Day got its transition, its uh, uh, start back during the Civil War, when there were so many members that were buried in cemeteries across, across the country that unofficial Decoration Days ceremonies would have. This continued unofficially for certain years to recognize men and women who, who supported our country. It wasn't until 1868 when General John Logan made an official proclamation that Decoration Day would be celebrated on May 30th. He was leader of an organization of Union soldiers and wanted to make sure that we could commemorate and recognize this as an official event. It wasn't long before several other states joined suit and created Decoration Day proclamations of their own. And then in 1868, the federal government recognized it as a national day, National Decorations Day, honoring all of those soldiers during the Civil War. It remained to be celebrated on May 30th until the United States passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act in 1968. That's when it was designated as Memorial Day on the fourth Monday of May. And this took effect starting in 1971. That day continues and, and we recognize that even though the name has changed, citizens throughout history have continued to recognize the service that our forefathers have contributed to allow us to live here. You know, um, whether you're in Civil War, whether it's World War One, World War Two, or you know the recent more recent Vietnam and World War II, or the war on terrorism, we continue to honor men and women that have served and are continuing to serve. There's a testament going back to General Logan in 1868. 
his orders stated, let no neglect, let no savages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. General Logan appropriately identified the cost of freedom with those orders. On this Memorial Day, we need to be continually grateful for those that have served before us, those continue to serve, and continue to recognize this tradition of supporting the folks that support us. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. We will conclude this service um, as we have for the last several years. Don and I always talk about which songs and um, the order of which songs, and it just wouldn't be right if we didn't con conclude it with God Bless the USA. So Don's going to come up and sing God Bless the USA. A little change this year. Then we're going to have the playing of taps before the benediction. Pastor Joel Schroeder of Sunnyside Baptist Church and then Amazing Grace by the River City Pipes and Drums. Uh, before Don comes up, again, I just want to thank uh, a few people. Sandy Production, uh, if we don't have rain to challenge them, we throw in 30 mile an hour winds. So they've done our sound for uh, the whole time, as long as I remember doing this service. So thanks, Don. We have Kansas um, Military Vehicle Preservation Association. I think we have five vehicles that they brought today. And again, uh, it's not easy to get those things going and here, and we appreciate them being here every, every year. And of course, my West Haven staff and, and our families who come out and support this event, um, rain or shine, uh, every year to get, make this happen. Thank you. One other thing before Don sings, I'd just like to recognize all the active duty military. If you would stand and be recognized at this time. Will all the veterans join them? Please stand at this time. As always, we thank you for your service. Yeah. 
I'm glad we're friends. Thank you, God. Please stand for the rendering of taps, followed by the benediction. This is the ultimate sacrifice. We also thank you for the example that the Lord has been before us and sacrificed their lives so we can have them. That we can worship freely, that we can live freely. Lord, I just pray that this sacrifice would not be complacency, that we would not rest on our laurels, but we would push harder. That we would be motivated to have the greatest country the world has ever seen. Lord, we love you. We pray you give us the strength, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this morning and uh, spending your morning with us to help recognize those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. And I know some of you are hurrying that uh, right now, so the uh, water and the rain, our thoughts and prayers are with you if you're dealing with those issues. So, um, and also this is the first year we haven't been able to park behind the mortuary, so please then you leave. Uh, drive careful and uh, again, thank you for coming out this morning.